Hi guys, welcome to Making Sawdust. I'm Kevin. Thank you for joining me. Today we are going to be talking about my 10-inch Craftsman Direct Drive three-wheel bandsaw. Today we are going to cover installing, adjusting, and properly tensioning your bandsaw blade. We will also cover adjusting the upper and lower guide assemblies. And we're going to answer some frequently asked questions and problems associated with adjusting your bandsaw. Welcome back, guys. The 10 inch direct drive craftsman three wheel bandsaw is actually a really popular little saw. It's bench top style, so it's really compact. It actually has a pretty wide throat, uh, so for your cutting capacity, it's pretty nice. It goes up to about three inches. I particularly cut more hardwoods and more exotic hardwoods, and this is actually a really good saw for resawing things that are exotic. Saving material is also another one of my considerations as compared to using a table saw and taking out an eighth inch kerf cut out of your material. So that's primarily why I use this little saw and once they are set up, they really are dreams to operate. They are not powerhouses, but I think any of you folks that own one of these saws were probably gluttons for punishment trying to get one of these things to tune real good. Mine works really good. First thing we're going to do, make sure our saw is unplugged. I'm also going to direct you to my video about my flip top or stowaway bandsaw. As you can see, I use this saw, folks. I try to keep it pretty clean. But obviously, you're going to have some stuff in it. What you can notice right here is my blade actually tracks towards the front of the wheel front of the tire. Hopefully that's focused good enough for you guys. And that's not a terrible problem actually. It may be a little concerning. Looks like it's right at that front edge. But your blade is going to track at the highest point on those tires. So there's a couple issues that can go along with that. If you have a bad bearing in one of your wheels, it's likely that you'll have a tracking issue. To loosen up your blade, you may have done this. You may not have ever done this. Maybe you've just purchased this saw. This top thumb screw adjusts your tension on this blade. The back thumb screw holds the adjustment assembly tight to the frame of the saw. So that is one of the tips I need to give you guys right here. That back thumb screw needs to be relatively snug when you're tensioning and installing that blade. Otherwise, this wheel kind of flops around and it's not going to allow you to roll your blade to get it seated on top of your wheels correctly. So that is one of the tricky parts of adjusting the saw. First thing I want to do, loosen up the tension a little bit on top. And then on the back side, you don't need to loosen the thumb screw on the back side very much. The more you loosen it, the more this wheel is going to wobble around. There we go. You notice that thing will boing, 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 pop right off. What you'll want to do is you'll want to inspect your wheels and your bearings. There's two bearings in each one of these wheels. They're identical. So there's going to be six bearings for this saw that are the same one. I do have a link to those. I have not needed to replace mine. They spin really freely. They don't make any noise. That's going to be an indication of a bad wheel bearing. And I already know this one spins well. You would have to remove your drive belt to spin this one. That is going to be one of the common problems. We'll address that at the end of the video. So, my super tip of the day. And this is actually a subscriber submitted tip. These little Harbor Freight clamps, these tiny little ones, are perfect for clamping to the wheel and holding the blade on especially on those three wheel saws. You're not going to have that problem on a two wheel saw very much, but on a three, you, three wheel, you will.
by the time you get ready to go up to the top here, the bottoms are going to want to try and fling off of there. Once you get it on there, you're going to want to make sure that it is in between your two blocks on the upper and the lower guide, and also up against those bearings or close to it. If you're putting on a brand new blade and possibly putting on new urethane wheels, your blade is likely going to track differently. So what I recommend is actually loosening up your guide, sliding your guide back, your upper and your lower. And then start to tension your blade. Get that back thumb screw just snug so it holds that wheel fairly solid. Start applying a little bit of pressure. By this time, if you have your blade and it is seated on all three wheels, you can remove your clamps. And start to roll your... Make sure she's staying on there, and as you do that, apply a little more tension each time. So here's our upper guide assembly right here. Well, you'll notice top two screws are the ones that held on our blade guard, the sheet metal piece that came around front here. This screw right here adjusts our bearing and our bearing assembly, our guide bearing, comes in and out on a shaft. So when you wanna set your guide bearing, after you have your bandsaw blade set you want to have oh, about a sheet of a sheet of paper maybe a business card because when you put pressure and you start cutting you can see your blade will right up against that wheel and start turning we're going to do the same on the bottom i do not have to adjust mine but in your case you will and the lower one will adjust our guide block guide in and out and you're going to want to adjust your guide block so they're just barely touching the blade so you're not going to have any side to side wobble but you also don't want your guide blocks to be touching the teeth now if you notice right here this assembly lower guide assembly i actually broke right here it's actually kind of a silly design it's kind of weak how i broke it as i was adjusting my guide blocks actually I was putting pressure on it like that and it snapped right off so some epoxy I filled up the corner and it has held so this part is not available online anywhere but I am considering making one someday so I have a backup if I ever make one I will show you guys so guys welcome to the frequently asked questions portion of this video this is, like I said earlier in the video, this is a very popular saw on Facebook, Kijiji, uh, Craigslist, places like that. And I commonly get questions about alignment of the blade. Why does my blade keep falling off? Why can't I get it adjusted? Well, I think one of the main reasons that these saws are so temperamental, some of them have been abused. 
there's six bearings in your wheels. There's three wheels. There's two bearings per wheel. If one of those bearings is just marginal, maybe it just has a little bit of noise in it, a little bit of grit in it, that can actually throw that wheel off that coplanar mode. So it's going to tell that blade to go off the wheel. Uh, that is one of the biggest issues. I have a link in the description and I also have links on my bandsaw parts list page that I posted earlier in the video. So check your bearings. They're actually really, really cheap. So buy a set of bearings for your saw, that'll probably fix your problem. The guides can also pull your blade off the wheel. If your upper and lower guides are not set properly, you're forcing that blade off the back side of that wheel possibly. Another frequently asked question I get is what is the proper teeth per inch for cutting certain materials. I have a few different blades. I have a 6 TPI, I have a 14, I have 16, I also have, I believe it's a 22 or a 24, all available with Amazon links on my website and the ones that I like. I like the Bosch actually. My rule of thumb is the harder the material, the more teeth per inch your blade. So I when I'm cutting exotics, even some domestic hardwoods, I'll use my 24 or 22 TPI. A 6 TPI is actually really good for pine and softer materials, and also dependent on what you're cutting, what your project is going to be. Uh, sometimes you can sacrifice a jagged cut or a rougher cut with one of those less, less TPI blades because you're going to do some other processes to that. So a less TPI blade is also going to allow you to cut faster, but you really have to allow the saw to work. So those are some tips with blades and teeth per inch. And finally, I have people asking about a fence or a miter jig. These are actually easy to make. I did not have either one of them for my saw. I actually have a video coming up very, very soon where I'm going to show off a little sled that I made, the miter gauge that I made, and some quick and easy tips to keep your saw running true if you're using a fence for resawing. So I wanted to thank each and every one of you. If you are still sticking around here at this point of the video, you might as well hit subscribe. Give me a like, leave me a comment, and tell me what you think. And I hope this was very, very helpful for you guys that own one of these awesome little unique sons of guns. And why don't you get out in your shop and start making some sawdust.